today I want to share with you this project I just finished. It's an action puzzle game called Chibata's Revenge. It's all built in React.js. I use the same tools and workflows that I use every day as a front-end developer. So in this video, I just want to walk you through what I made, generally technical approach of how I did it, and then also some struggles that I hit along the way. So let's dive right in. This game is available on itch.io and it's linked below. It's totally free to play. It runs right in the browser. So here I am running the game. You can see that it's just running on localhost 3000 here. If I use my arrow keys, I can guide the character around. And the goal of this game, uh, it's all based around bread characters, right? So the goal of this game is to collect bags of flour. So here I'll collect this one and then I'll collect this one. As soon as I collect the last bag of flour in the level, the goal space is gonna open up. So we'll see that here. Nice, now this space over here is all lit up and I can step inside it to complete the level. Now that was a really basic level. As we go, uh, there are a lot more mechanics that get added, like these keys and locks. I've prepared this whole little montage of all the features that we put in the game. I'm gonna play that now. Gameplay features in Chibata's Revenge. Fire that kills you when stepping in it, unless you have the fire suit. Water that drowns you, unless you have the goggles that allow you to swim. Enemies patrol and kill you on collide. Each enemy has its own movement quirk. In addition to threatening obstacles, there are different floor tiles that affect your movement like ice that sends you sliding in your current direction, or maybe redirects you if you hit one of these corner spaces. We have conveyor belts too, similar idea, but it always sends you in the direction that the arrow shows. It's a puzzle game, so of course we have keys and locks and switches that open doors, teleports whiz you around the map. Super Mario style, every level has a time limit, you have to complete the level before the time runs out. And of course, there are run-ins with Chibata, the main villain. So let's crack open the hood here and just see how this game works. So I'll reload. I'm gonna pop open the inspector. So the first thing I wanna talk about is the graphics. Now everything you see here is rendered just from one single sprite sheet. And it's all loaded and downloaded to the browser at a natural one pixel size. So if I just make a little change here in the CSS, you can see that working. This looks tiny, right? It's a really small image and I'll, I'll put the sprite sheet up on screen. The idea is that one image is downloaded and then all of these individual characters that you see are individual crops taken from that sprite sheet. So the asset starts really small, but if I put these styles back in real quick, there's this responsive media query. If I pull it up here, see at the root level, there's a CSS variable called pixel size. And so if I take the screen and change it, that pixel size gets smaller and then we get into kind of mobile state. So it's responsive. That's another benefit of building this on the web. Pretty cool. Now that CSS variable is used here in kind of the game's container screen. There's a rule here that says transform scale and then it passes in that pixel size value. Sometimes graphics can get blurry though when you do that, of course, because you're showing something at a larger size than what it actually is. And so I also have a CSS rule in place here called image rendering pixelated. And so even though if I turn that off, you can kind of see it, see how blurry it is right now. With pixel art, you can just throw this on any canvas tag or an image tag and it's gonna crisp up the images, which again is great for this pixel art kind of style. Let's change to a different level here just to switch things up. How about this one? Now you can see there's different things on the screen here. And in this game, I took a lot of inspiration from working with engines like Unity and Godot in following a strict game object pattern. So in short, the different entities on the screen are instances of game objects. Like this is a hero placement, a button placement. When you press that, it changes doors. We have an enemy placement here. Those are all instances of classes that hold their bits of individual pieces of state. And the idea is that each one specifies its own React component to render. So if I just pop open the DOM tree again, you can see that all the different objects on screen are just individual divs. And within each div is a canvas tag. So I can see this one that's rapidly changing. What's happening here is that this enemy game object has a dedicated XY position and a game loop is running. And every single frame that game loop is saying, hey, you're trying to move, so go a little bit up this way, go a little bit up this way. Can you go up anymore? If not, change directions. That kind of logic all happens in the game object. But that object supplies a React component that should render. And that's exactly what you see here, where React is iterating through all the game objects in the level. We'll talk more about level configs in a second. And rendering that component right at that XY position where you should go. And so that's why you see it always um, changing here using transform translate. So React is really just the drawing layer here. So say I walk the main character around a little bit, you can see that this little hop he does the game object is telling the React component, you are this far away in your move. So maybe 
elevates you so that you kind of like ramp up and do that kind of thing. So mixing that game object pattern with React rendering was really helpful here. It enabled a lot of really cool effects. Let's talk about the camera next. I'm gonna switch the level. Okay, cool. Do some magic here. Okay, so I'm taking the zoom out and we're just at one X size. Now how this works is that everything in the game level is rendered on this one plane. And the position of that plane is shifted based on the hero's position. So if I walk around a little bit, you can see that the whole plane is kind of moving. If you see this red outline here, that's the bounds of the game screen. And so if I just turn on overflow hidden, you can see that everything outside of that frame is cropped and then we kind of get this Game Boy screen sort of effect. Okay, let's turn the zooming back on so we can see it working in that context. Cool, and now you can see that just those few little moves kind of bring the whole thing to life. Everything that you see on the screen is configured by a JavaScript object. That object has rules in it, like what colors the background, how big is it? If, if I change to like a different level, this one is more of a kind of tall layout. Where are all the placements? Like what are all the game objects in the level? That's all managed in React state as an object. And then if we switch levels, it's just a matter of changing which object we're using and then React will do its thing and re-render the whole screen. So that part is pretty automatic, pretty awesome. Now let's shift gears and talk about the level editing feature. So we have a lot of levels here. I said that everything here is powered by a JavaScript object and authoring that by hand would be a pain, right? So what we did is we created a tool inside the game here. So I'll just scroll to the bottom here and say, create new level. Now I have a blank level. I can click this edit button and this pulls up a little like the Sims style menu where I've got all the different tiles I could place. So I can click water, place some water around and it just appears. I can choose fire instead. Now I've got fire and then at any time I can just hit this play button and that game loop will resume. And so all of the action will keep going. So I resume. And now I can kind of play around in that level that I just created. So let's add some more things to this. Edit, I'll go and add an enemy here. Add a flying pretzel right there. Maybe one of these walking guys right here. And then, cool. So I can play this, we'll reload the level, and now our enemies are here. So for us to work on these puzzles, it was just a matter of us clicking around in here, finding ideas we liked, and then we'd come up here. At the bottom, there's this get JSON export button. So I'll click that. It copies all the data of everything that I built to my clipboard, and then I can paste that into the project. You might be thinking like, pasting that into the project, that's so manual and awful. And, and to be honest, at first we did explore the idea of like, what if there was a database where you could save your level and it would go to a database and then anybody could like pull it down. And at the end of the day, it just ended up being too much scope for what we were trying to create. To be totally honest, this whole project was supposed to take a weekend. I had the idea for it and was like, you know, I could probably build out some little simple thing really quickly and then just throw some art on it and it'll be a really cool demo. But one thing led to another and then the scope of it just got crazy. And so to, at some point we had to draw a line. We're like, no more features. That's why there's no like database or import or anything like that. We also have some run-ins with Chibata, the main villain. And of course I gotta show you that. So here he is. And just like the different enemies, he's also a game object. And so he'll do some movement. He can oops, uh, he can trigger things that happen, like he's triggering the purple doors to come out. He spawns clowns just like this, oh gosh. And the idea is that you have to like avoid him as long as you can while also collecting on the flower and navigating the level and stuff. So it gets kind of chaotic, it's pretty fast paced, but it's a lot of fun to play, a lot of fun to work on. And so I've tried to talk through this at a pretty high level, uh, but if you wanna go deeper, I did also create a full tutorial series on building this game from scratch. We start with a new React project. You can use Vite or Create React App or Next.js, whatever you like. And then we build all of these features really from the ground up, like every single line of code is covered. So if you're interested in that kind of detail, there's a link to that in the description below. Also, feel free to pop in our Discord community. There's a link to that below. If you have any specific questions, I'm always hanging out in there. It's a cool place with a lot of people working on games. Also, when I say we, I'm referring to me and my friend Glenn. Glenn and I have been working on games together for a long time. We have a couple out on Steam. He helped me do all the puzzles and a lot of work on this game. So thank you, Glenn. Thank you so much for watching this casual, flowy style of video. Subscribing and liking the video really helps me out. So thank you so much. I'll catch you next time.